Now in this lesson we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the hexagonal prism, but this time with a cylinder, right, with a circular pipe. So a cylinder in some cases is easier than a hexagon because the front view and the side view are exactly the same and less truncated as we're going to see. Later on we're going to section it across this line. The plan is a circle and the development of a cylinder is a rectangle, right? a simple rectangle. But we're going to truncate this later on to see how that changes. So we've got our front view, our plan in projection with the front view, which would mean that's exactly in line with it, and the side view exactly in projection with the front view, the exact same height and the exact same width since the circle is as wide as it is high. Now the problem with a cylinder after it has been truncated is that you have no edges to work with as with other polygons. You have no edges because it's a smooth surface there are no edges to number. But in this case, as a working, we divide, we invent those edges as construction, only as construction, and we work with imaginary lines. All right. So first thing you do with a cylinder, when you're working with a cylinder, which later on has to be truncated, is you divide this, this circle into 12 equal parts, 12 being an adequate number of divisions to give you an accurate curve once truncated. So I'm going to divide I'm going to divide the circle into twelve parts, taking thirty degree divisions. Alright, so I've got the ninety degree divisions. And I've got thirty degree division. and the 60 on the other side and the other way around 30 and 60 and 30 and 60 so I've divided the circuit into 12 equal parts now first thing I'm going to do with those 12 parts is find the length of the development because the length of the development can be taken as 12 just a second. Well, so each of these divisions can be taken as one of these divisions, and 12 of them would make the circumference, so the length of the development. So, what I'm going to do is choose start the suitable space for the start of my development and then I'm going to take one division length this is not entirely accurate taking this length as the chord length instead of the arc length but acceptable so I'm taking this length one division and I'm going to mark 12 of these divisions I've marked, I've marked 12 divisions I'm going to so that's the length of my development that's the circumference of the plan and I'm going to draw faint lines for each division because I need these as reference to when it's going to be truncated if it's not truncated, which is never the case in questions, especially in exam questions, you don't need these. But we won't, won't have simple questions as not untruncated cylinders.
So, so far we have the front, the side, the plan, and the development. Now, that would be ready without a truncation, but we're going to add a truncation. Now, as it is the case in this cylinder, we're going to add a 60 degree truncation. 60 degree truncation. We're going to cut off that part with a 60 degree angle. <coughs> So I get set my T-square to the required angle and cut off that part of the cylinder. Right, so this should be fainter than the rest. So this line is the original cylinder. She has been in 2H. Then you darken out the remaining cylinder you want in HB. I'm using slightly darker pencils to make my shape, to make my work more visible. Now, since we don't have edges, these edges I've created in the plan should also be created in the front and side. And they should be created by simply project, projecting these edges, these divisions, on the circumference up to the front view. <clears throat> We're going to see later on how helpful these divisions are going to be. Now, they're not really part of the cylinder, they're just imaginary construction lines. Now, as I did with the front view, <coughs> I need the side view divided as well. So I'm going to take a line from the top part of the plan, a line from the first point of the side view and project a 45 degree angle. That 45 degree angle helps me divide the side view because I'm going to project these lines onto that 45 degree Take those divisions now onto the side view. This again is just construction work, so it should be fainter in 2H, fainter than the outline. Those are the divisions. The divisions you have here, the divisions you have here. Now, we should number these because sitting there with all these lines, you might easily get confused. Now, the shorter part is this edge here. This is the shortest part I've had after I've truncated. So, that's number one. So, I'm going to mark number one here. And number one in the side view would be this point here. And one for the development is always at the beginning. So I can finish off the development numbers from 1 to 12 and then again number 1. And I'm going to go around the plan 1, 2, 3, up to 12. And then project these numbers onto the front view. So if this is 4, exactly. Above it you get another four, 5, 6, 7, and then again. The 8 is with the 6, the 9 is the exact same height of the 5, and so on. So you see how the numbers went around also the front view. Now the 1 is here, the 2 is above it. It's on this side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The two edges are on their own. But all the others are double numbers. Now all I have to do now is see the perpendicular height of each number, where it has been truncated. 1 has been hit, has been cut on this level. So you draw a line projected from number 1 and you simply mark where number 1 is. This is number 1, it's that high. This is number 1, it's that high. And number 1 on the other edge is that high as well. Number 2. Project a line from 2. It's the same height as 12, so I'm going to mark 2 and 12 for that. 3 and 11. That line, I should mark 3 and 11 on that. And it's just a matter of joining the dots. The line taken from 2, join that 2. The line taken from 3, join that 3. The line taken from 4, joined on 4.